Hey everyone, this is Creo, and today I have a tutorial on how to create this pretty simple but still cool futuristic wallpaper. And this could be used as a desktop wallpaper or as a background for your YouTube banner or for your website or pretty much anything. Now, if you're a subscriber, you know that I've been gone for a pretty long time. And uh, if you want to know why, please read the video description. It'll have all the info you need. But now we're going to get started. So we're going to create a new document. And uh, I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is pretty standard. You don't have to use these settings if you don't want to. You could use your own size if you want to. But uh, I'm going to go with a transparent background. So once you got that, you want to hit OK. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the foreground and the background color. So we're going to go down to the bottom left of the window. And uh, for the foreground color, uh, I'm going to go with a dark blue color. and uh, if we look left to right, you want it fairly close to the metal, so not too strong, uh, sort of gray kind of, but you want it to be pretty dark, so kind of like a night sky type of blue. So once you've got that, you want to hit OK, and then you want to go and ch uh, change the background color as well. At this time, you want a similar type of blue, just a lighter shade, and a little bit more to the right, so it's a little bit more saturated, so something like this should be good. Now, if you want to, you can copy this exact code here and you will get these, uh, the exact same color. Uh, that's not really necessary. You could just use any color in this general area and it should look pretty good. So then hit OK. And now we're going to create like a cloudy type of effect. So to do that, we go to Filter, Render, and then Clouds. And uh, what we're going to do now is, if you look at this example right here, you can see that some of the areas are a little, are a little bit more highlighted. So there's like a light, lighter area around here, but it's darker down here, and it's also lighter up here. And to get that effect, we have to use our brush. So uh, select your brush tool, and you want to use one of the standard brushes, uh, the round ones, should be at the top of your list. And for the size, you want it around 800 or 700 pixels, so somewhere in that area. And the hardness, 0%. You also want a fairly low opacity, so I'm going to go with 39. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to paint some of the areas dark like this. And some of the areas are going to be a bit brighter. So then we use this arrow here to switch so that the foreground color uh, becomes our background color and vice versa. So if you hit that arrow, uh, you want to paint some of the areas so they get a little bit more light, like this. And uh, you don't want to paint too much because you still want to be able to see the clouds in the background, sort of. So you don't want it to be too fuzzy. So this should be pretty good. Now once you've done that, you want to go to Filter, Pixelate, and Mosaic. So this will obviously give it like a pixelated effect. And for the cell size, which is pretty much the size of each square, I would suggest 85. If you go too big, it'll be kind of too abstract and too flat and too boring. So uh, I, I'm going to use 85. You can use whatever size you feel like using, but 85 is a pretty good size in my opinion. And by the way, if you can't see the changes you make, you have to hit the preview box right here. So once you get that, you want to hit OK. And uh, now we're going to go to the filter again, but this time we're going to go to the filter gallery. And if you go to the artistic folder, you should find this filter called paint Dobs. Now, if you click on this uh, filter right here, you should be able to see some kind of neon uh, colored lines happening, uh, kind of wrapped around the squares, which gives it a pretty cool effect. But to get this exact effect, you have to change the settings a little bit. So. You want to bring the brush size all the way down to 1 and the sharpness all the way up to 40. And you also want the, the, the brush type to be simple. So once you've got those settings, you want to click OK. And uh, it already looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a gradient overlay to this. So right click on the layer, go to blending options and go to gradient overlay. And we're going to use these standard settings, so just a linear gradient, 90 degree angle, black to white. But we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. And we're also going to decrease the opacity to around 30%. And then click OK. 
Now the last step is to add some more contrast. And to do that, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrasts, and then bring the contrast all the way up to around 80, like that, and then click OK. So now we're actually done. Uh, if we compare this one to the original, it's pretty similar. I mean, the patterns that we created are kind of random, but uh, in overall, it's, it's pretty similar. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as you noticed, it's pretty simple to do. So I hope it'll be useful for whatever projects you're working on. And uh, again, I know that I've been gone for a long time, so please uh, read the video description. And I promise I'll make more videos in the future. I'm gonna try to make more, uh, more tutorials because those are pretty fun to make and I know that I'm helping people while doing them. And also speed arts are pretty time consuming, so I'm gonna stay away from that for a little while and focus more on tutorials and templates and stuff like that. But again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.